This tutorial is sponsored by VideoBlox. Hey, what's up guys? Chris Connor here and welcome to a brand new Creatrix tutorial. Today, we're moving on to the third tutorial in the Star Wars VFX Academy series and this one is called Force Freeze. Let's take a look at the clip. Pretty awesome. This one was inspired by the Force Awakens film where Kylo Ren freezes the laser bolt using the Force and I wanted to recreate something similar. So Star Wars VFX Academy series has been an idea that I had for a long time but wasn't really able to realize it until now. So before we move on I want to take a moment and introduce you guys over to the amazing people at Videoblox who made this tutorial possible. Videoblocks is for us, the filmmakers, the VFX artists, the producers. It's a subscription-based service that offers members access to an amazing array of downloads from stock footage, motion backgrounds, special effects, After Effects templates and more. Their library consists of beautiful landscapes, wildlife, aerial shots, explosions, slow-mo clips, but the astonishing part is that they offer a 7-day free trial for new members, which is the best way to get introduced to Videoblocks, experience their service, and get access to stunning content for free. So guys, make sure to follow the link in the description, get signed up, and start browsing. Enjoy! And with that, fire up After Effects and let's get started. So with my um, project settings set, press OK, I'm going to go into my folder and import my clip. And this is the force freeze folder. So just making sure, drag and drop. OK, let's drag it into a new composition. And if I remember correctly, yes. This is reversed, so I'm going to hit right click, transform and flip horizontal because this is, was the way the original preview of the effect was done. And I'm just going to scrape through and you know what, actually, let's take a look at the clip. Pretty cool. Now, obviously, this is not the way I shot it. I have done a lot of color grading and visuals to make it look like this, but do not worry because we're going to work with light effects. It doesn't matter if the color grading was done before then. And if you want access to this and many other project files, as well as my raw clips, make sure to check the link in the description under that like button for becoming a patron and supporting the channel and getting access to amazing rewards so if you're interested the link is in the description so now what I'm gonna do is actually let's first clip my timeline by pressing B go to the end right there pressing N so we have a preview window and my resolution is on half cool so the first thing that I want to do is basically create a laser bolt so I'm gonna go right there I'm going to hit Ctrl Y for a new solid. Press OK, Ctrl Shift D, delete, and open this. And I'm going to hide it for now. I'm going to select my pen tool. I'm going to go zoom in here. Let's say make one, two, three points. Take it out and bring it in. So I'm going to basically want to create a layer mask that looks like a laser bolt. I'm going to leave. Let's see how it looks like. OK. That looks OK. Let's make it a bit thinner so it's like more aggressive looking okay and this one doesn't look like much now but we're gonna make some magic so I'm gonna change the mode to add okay I'm gonna actually 
I'm gonna hit F and change the feather value to 5 so it's not as crisp. Then I'm gonna to go to Effects, Video Copilot and Vibrance and this is a free plugin which is pretty cool from the amazing Andrew Kramer. So make sure you have this one because I use it all the time. Let's fill up empty background and that's cool for now, but it looks very empty. So I'm going to go to effects, stylize and glow. Okay, let's put this like 125. Okay, and intensity 0.3. Hit control D, make the radius to 500. And actually let's make this one one. So you can see how we start to fill the space with like the laser bolt emitting light basically. So I'm gonna do one last control D to duplicate and let's put this one to 1000. That's 100, 1, 0, 0, 0. That's 1000, okay? And I'm gonna go to effects, color correction, hue and saturation. And I wanna go for a, for a Luke Skywalker dark looking thing. Let's go here. Let's make this one plus 120. Okay. Let me check something. I think let's move this up. Okay, it was a bit offset. Yep, awesome. So that looks okay for now, but I want to do a cool trick, which is basically duplicating everything and to make them look more light. So I'm gonna change this one's glow effect to like 0.1. Okay. Let's put this one to like plus 10, so the saturation, as this saturation goes up, the effect will look more, more bluish, basically. Let's make another control D, and actually for the second one, let's change it to like 7, and then for the third one, let's make like 15, perfect. And let's do two of those 15 feather values, see? That looks pretty cool. And like playing around and it really depends on your clip, like the actual exposure of your actual footage and how much of these duplications you must do in order to make it look cool. And actually for the last one, I'm gonna make this go like up by 20. And for this one, let's make it 20 as well. Awesome, okay. I'm quite happy. Let's try one more. Nah, that doesn't look that good. Okay, so now we have our bolt, but it's not animated. Now, and the thing is, this is supposed to be a laser bolt suspended in space by using the force. So what I need to do is press P and hit Alt click to open the expression control and write in wiggle parenthesis 50 comma 5 and close this one. And I'm just gonna, oops, control C. I'm gonna select the entire expression and hit control C to copy. Go to the second one, Alt click, control V to paste. And do the same thing for the other ones. P, Alt click, control V. And the last one, P, Alt click, and control V. Awesome. So by isolating them, let's take a look at what we've done. As you can see, if I start moving through, you can see how it moves independently and it creates that frozen kind of thing, like something is doesn't let it go basically and move like fast, which is cool. And it's gonna help out sell the effect of using the force. Okay, I'm going to stop isolating them. Now, what we need to do before we let it just do its thing, let's go right there. Select every layer, zoom in here, and let's just change the position to right that point and press P and start putting actual keyframes, not just the expression keyframes, but like more, and move it towards the center of the hand as we move through. And as you can see, like there, it was supposed to be right there. Now I'm just gonna go one, two, three. I'm gonna push it back outside the frame at that spot, right there. I'm gonna let the glow show and I'm just gonna trim the layers to that point. So after that, there's like nothing there. Just gonna go through, goes there, awesome. Now what I wanna do is have one frame go very, very close to the hand. And on the next one, I'm just gonna push it off just enough. Okay, let's push it off again. Let me zoom in here because I think I made a mistake with one of those. Okay. 
Let's delete this ones. Scrape through. Now, if I'm not wrong, yes. We have a problem there because of the positioning of this one. It makes the entire bolts go out of frame. So I'm just gonna push this back just enough. So now that does not happen. Let's put this back down. So basically you wanna go through and if your hand moves up and down a lot, you just wanna make sure that you position the thing on the same level as your hand, okay? And because it has a dynamic movement, it's not really gonna show that much. There, then it moves down there. Okay. Awesome. So now that that is done, we still need to do some things. Because as you can see, the laser bolt looks cool. It moves in a cool way, but it's way too perfect because its illumination does not flicker. And this is supposed to be energy that is stopped. So I think by putting on exposure, flickering and make it go up and down, it really sells the effect that this is energy and not a single solid that we just basically painted on top of our clip. So what I want to do is let's select the first one and go to effects, color correction and exposure. Awesome. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the exposure amount. I'm going to hit alt and click. And this one once more opens the expression control. I'm going to write wiggle parenthesis 10 comma one and I'm just gonna cl close it for now I'm gonna close the entire effect and I'm gonna go here hit control C and paste it to the other ones so let's take a look at what we have with this one if I scrape through the timeline let's let me zoom out and actually isolate the clips you can see that as I move through let's change this to quarter for now Let's do. As you can see now, the exposure of the entire laser bolt keeps going up and down, and that really sells the effect, which is a pretty cool technique in my point of view. So awesome. Now we have our laser bolt, which is cool. But now what we need to do is actually create force fields after the laser bolt has been stopped, basically. So I'm going to go to that point. Let's go pitch down. I'm going to put this back to half. Okay. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer by hitting Control, Alt, and Y. I'm just going to trim it back there. I'm going to go to Effects, Effects, Desort, there, and select Bulge. I'm just going to change the radius to 200 and 200. Okay. I'm going to put the center point in my palm. And let's pin all edges and put the anti-aliasing too high because we want the best quality. I'm going to go zoom in here, right there. So what I want to do is put it below my laser bolt because I don't want the actual laser to be affected. Okay, I'm going to change the bolt height to minus 0.25. So it doesn't actually magnify but do the opposite effect which i think looks way cooler and i'm going to actually open the effects tab to the bulge and let's zoom in here go to the first frame right there and i'm going to put a keyframe here and i'm going to put page down one two times let's put it back to zero one two put it back to minus 0.25 go up again Put it back to zero and i'm pretty sure by now you realized what we're doing so i'm going to zoom out a bit i'm going to select my keyframes and hit Control c page down Control v let's actually change right there copy them again go here one two frames Control v to paste right there select them again Control c go here page down twice Control v to paste and basically we just animated the entire effect in a very quick way so let's actually do a preview now to see what we have so far i'm just gonna put this one to half okay cool okay 
pretty awesome. Let me zoom in here so you can see the pulsating effect of the... See? That looks pretty cool. And in the co with the combination of the flickering that the bolt has, it makes it look way more... I don't want to say natural, but way more convincing, let's say. But we're not done just yet. What I need to do now is create a heat force field effect, basically, for the entire scene, because this thing is supposedly emitting a lot of energy. We just stopped it. So what I'm going to do is go right on the same spot. And let's just duplicate this thing, delete the bulge effect, and go to effects. Video call palette and hit distortion. Actually, hit control C, C. Hit control D, then delete. A mistake has been made. So, effect video call palette and hit distortion. Now, this is another plugin, but this one is unfortunately not free, but it's not that expensive. But the thing about this one is that it is amazing for creating force field effects like, I don't know, Star Wars. And because it has very advanced settings and heat maps included in this one. Now, you can use an effect called Turbulent Displays to try and do the same, but it's really not as advanced as this one. But if you don't have it, the other one, if you mess around with the settings, it's going to look good enough, I would say. But this one is more for like pro effects. So I'm going to change the settings to Smoke, Amount to 5, Heat Amount, let's make it small, like 10. And wind speed, 3, because I want it to be like really fast. But here's the thing, I want the wind direction to be opposite to my actual bolt. So I'm going to put it to minus 90. Okay, let's zoom in here. Let's get right there. Okay, and make sure it's an effect of distortion is under your actual bolt layers. And you can easily pre-compose those, bring it back to add so you don't have to mess around with like four of them. So now as you, if I zoom in here, you can see what it does. It creates a very cool distortion effect with like heat maps as well that make this one look way more awesome than if it didn't have them. So let's actually preview this for the last time. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> Awesome, let me... Oh, come on, I'll save. Let me zoom in. Zoom in. And as you can see, this is what we're Now, with the inclusion and the combination of those two adjustment layers that work as, like, distortion effects and the combo of our laser beam having position and exposure expressions to move around, I think the combination looks pretty good. Now, make sure that you will adjust all of your settings based on what your scene needs and not just copy numbers because that really doesn't help much. Okay guys, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and make sure to check the links in the description under that like button and I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay creative and awesome. Stay creative and awesome.